Welcome to lesson number three. Um, church services, going to church. Uh, so first off, why should I go to church? Uh, first off, because it was God's idea. Um, God tells us to uh, to go to church. In uh, the book of Hebrews, for instance, he says, don't forsake it. Don't stop going to church, uh, but go to church more often um, as you see um, the end approaching. Um, in, uh, in the law, in the Old Testament, it talks about um, God tells Israel to camp around in a circle around the tent of uh, around the tent of meeting, and if you don't understand what I'm talking about, that's okay. Um, you'll learn you'll learn about it eventually, and so it's not really not really a big issue. But moral of the story being, he told Israel to camp together, um, and uh, so it really was God's idea. Um, he said it in place when 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 Jesus, um, who who is God, when Jesus was was leaving, he told he told them you know what to do. Uh, so, anyways, um, we go we go to church also to be built up in the faith, to uh, be encouraged. Um, we get with a bunch of people who have similar goals to us. You know, we're we're all here to 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 learn more about God, to uh, to encourage each other, uh, to reach out to the community, and to love one another. You know, we all have that same purpose, and uh, so it really helps us to be built up when we get around other people who are like us. Um, not like us as in, <laughs> you know, we all think alike. Obviously, you know, we have Republicans and Democrats and rich and poor, and I'm not talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about we're all striving for the same goal. Um, also, another reason to go to church, uh, to help others. Um, when you go to church, you're able to uh, see other Christians who are struggling with something, maybe something you have struggled before in the past, and you're able to encourage them just as the same as other people will encourage you. You know, we all need each other's help, and we all need each other. Um, it's like a body. In fact, the Bible describes it being like a body, you know. The heart doesn't need the lung. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> – the heart needs the lungs. Uh, you know, and the lungs need the feet, and the feet need the head. I mean, they all need each other. And uh, so when we meet together, when we go to church, it, 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 we, we help ourselves and we help others. Um, really, what, what we see throughout the Bible is that God really made us for community. We, he made us to be um, with other people, to connect with others. Uh, no man was meant to live their life by themselves. Um, you know, you see Jesus who came and he didn't spend his life on a mountaintop. No, he was with people. Um, he called his disciples to spend, to go into ministry with them. Uh, we see Adam uh, in the in Genesis, and it wasn't God said it wasn't good that he was alone, so he made him a wife. Um, you know, all throughout the Bible, we, we, we see God um, trying to emphasize the idea of, you know, um, community. Um, so, uh, also, another reason why to go to church is so we can accomplish more. Um, when when we're all working together, we can always do more. Um, uh, you know, it, it, every year on Halloween night, we have a what's called the Harvest Fest. Uh, it, a Halloween party, basically, um, where we have a bunch of games for kids and candy and all kinds of fun stuff, um, and it's a safe environment for the kids. Um, and it, it, that wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to do that for just one or two people. I mean, we we need a whole group of people. Um, you know, we we can accomplish more when we're all working together. Um, uh, also, another reason why we should go to church is to make sure our beliefs are consistent with the Bible. Sometimes when we aren't going to church, in fact, a lot of times when we aren't going to church, um, we kind of just start making stuff up. And then we stop reading the Bible, we stop praying. But when we go to church, we're able to um, stay on target with what the right thing is to believe and, and to do. You know, we, we learn not to separate ourselves. We learn to keep on loving each other, each other even when we get hurt. Um also, going to church is a safeguard against falling away. Um, it's easy to say, "Oh no, I'll never, I'll never stop being a Christian," but then when a problem comes by, it kind of it tears us down. And sometimes, if we go through a lot of different problems at the same time, we just kind of get really discouraged. Excuse me. Or maybe somebody hurts our feelings in the church or out of the church. Excuse me, either or. And uh, you know, don't let that stop you from going to church. Um, you know what? I've gone to businesses, you know, I, I've gone and eaten at restaurants, for instance, uh, where, where they didn't do a very good job or I got sick or whatever. And I still eat at restaurants, you know. I, um, a bad experience can't be the end of it. Or maybe you went to a bad church. I mean, maybe there's just a whole bunch of bad, you know, I get that. But the truth is we're all 
not perfect. And if you read through the Bible, that's one of the things that you see time and time again. People who aren't perfect that God still used. You know, only Jesus is perfect because he's God. Um, he was never created. He's always been God. He's perfect. Uh, and, uh, you know, but everyone else in the Bible, they messed up. You know, Adam messed up. Noah messed up. Moses messed up. Uh, Israel messed up. Uh, a lot of the prophets, you know, messed up. It's, it's not about us being perfect. It's about um, it's about God, and uh, even though God knew we were gonna make mistakes, He knew we were gonna mess up. He still told us, "Hey, uh, I want you guys to meet together." Um, so really, it's gonna help you to not um, to not uh, get discouraged and, and back out of out of out of Christianity. It'll help you to uh, to keep going even when you don't feel like keep going. A church has a way of just helping us to connect with each other and, and to keep urging each other on. Um, so at our church, and, and most churches are going to have a similar, um, or Protestant churches, not necessarily Catholic churches, but uh, most Protestant churches are going to have a very similar uh, setup. Um, at the beginning of service, um, our service on uh, Sunday morning starts at 10, and on Sunday evening it starts at 6. Uh, and on, uh, on a Wednesday night it starts at 7, but it has a different uh, format. Um, on Sundays, um, typically we have announcements, um, and then we take up tithes and offering. Um, which will be discussed in a later lesson. Uh, and then we have a time of worship. Um, and then uh, Pastor Randy or, or myself or Chuck uh, will get up and, and, we'll, and we'll preach. Basically what that is, what preaching is or a sermon is, is that's when you take the Bible and you read from it and you help people to see how it fits their lives. You help them to understand it better. That's a sermon. Um, so after that sermon is a time of prayer and then... We go home. That's more or less, you know, what happens there. Obviously, there more could be said when we're in our times of worship. For instance, sometimes the gifts of the Spirit will be shown. You know, different things like that. But that's a discussion for for a later time. Um, on Wednesday night services, we don't have that. We open up with uh, worship, and then we have a, a teaching um, where Pastor just doesn't really. Uh, he just more focuses on uh, the Bible and what it says, and uh, you know, and, and then we get out after an hour. Um, Sunday mornings are usually about an hour and a half, and Sunday evenings are usually about an hour and a half. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> um, what we have in any given week is we have the Sunday morning and Sunday night services. We have a Wednesday night service. Um, and then we have prayer times. Basically, an hour before every service, uh, the church is open for prayer. Also, on Tuesday between 10 and 12, we have prayer. Um we have a food pantry that gives out food on Wednesdays um, between 10 and 12. Um, we have uh, a young adults group that meets on Tuesday nights um, in my house. Uh, we have a men's group that meets at uh, the Alamar restaurant. Uh, and just, I mean, there's no lesson. It's just kind of hanging out. Uh, there's a women's Bible study that meets at the pastor's house. And... Um, you know, they, they go typically go through a book of the Bible or maybe a to topic of the Bible. Um, then we have what's called Hit Party. That's um, Harvest is Plentiful. That's a group for women of all ages um, to to just have fun together. They, there's a short devotion. There's, there's some prayer. There's fun and games. Uh, there's snacks. There's all kinds of fun stuff with that. Um, that's that's what our – and the Hit Party is usually on the second uh, – second or third Friday of the month, uh, depending on what's going on that, that month. Um, and uh, that's that's what our typical week or month looks like. Um, the, the young adults group is every uh, is every week. The men's group is every week. The women's Bible study is every week. The Sunday services are every week. The Wednesday night services are every week. Um, and at the Wednesday night services, we have for the adults um, a class, but then we have two different uh, age groups um, of preteens and then teenagers uh, that meet over in the um, uh, in the youth and kids building um, across the, the um, parking lot, and then we also have nursery for Sunday services and for Wednesday service, um, and uh, then we have special things that we do every year on Halloween night. We have our harvest fest. Um, at the end of the school year, we have a um, out of school barbecue. Um, we do the Easter at the park. Um, we do um, just a lot of different things like that throughout the year. Um, and then the different groups will sometimes do different things. Sometimes the young adult group, for instance, will go and clean up stuff in the, in the community or stuff like that. 
So uh, that's just the real basic of what our church does. Um, that, that brings us to one of the last things about this lesson. How often should I go to church? That is what a lot of people say. Well, I mean, looking at what the purpose of church is, I, I think that that kind of answers it for you, you know. Uh, God told us to, to, to meet together, and, and, and it kind of keeps us in check, so that tells us maybe I should go pretty frequently. Um, and then, okay, well, when we go to church, we're encouraged. You know, well, how, how much encouragement do you want? <laughs> do you want to, do you want to, to really um, connect with God and connect with others, or do you just want to kind of sit in your house and have a, have a bad day. I mean, it's it's really up to you. It's not like our salvation isn't dependent on going to church, um, but it helps us. It helps us to keep going and to not give up. It helps us to see that there's there's a purpose in what we're doing. And um, I'm one of those kinds of people who I, I'm at the church almost every time that the doors are open. And you know, I don't understand people who wouldn't want that because I just love being at church. Um, but, you know, make time for it. It's important, and, and try to go as often as you can, even when you don't feel like it. Sometimes we, oh, well, I'm tired, so I'm not going to go, but I highly discourage you from doing that. When you, It's easy to get out of, the, out of the habit of going to church, so really go as much as you can. Um, but uh, it is worth saying that going to church isn't going to make you a Christian. If you haven't made, made, um, made a commitment um, to, excuse me, to live how, uh, how God wants you to live, if, if you're not... If you're not seeking after God, if you're not if you're not doing that, you know, if if you're just calling yourself a Christian but not actually living like a Christian, going to church isn't going to do anything. Um, it, it's not like some magical formula. Well, I go to church, so God has to answer my prayers now. It doesn't work like that. Um, and what is it the pastor says? Uh, being in a being in a garage doesn't make you a car. Well, it's the same thing. Um, but uh, a lot of times people just kind of go from church to church. You know, they'll kind of go to a church until their feelings get hurt or until maybe maybe they're just tired of the pastor and they want to try something new. I want to encourage you not to do that. Um, there's something that happens when you really start to get to know a pastor and a pastor really gets to know you where you're able to reach a, a level of maturity that you were never able to reach before. You know, sometimes people change churches every four or five years. Sometimes it's every year. You know, sometimes it, 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 somewhere in there. And what happens is it, is, it, is it causes us to not grow and mature in our faith. Instead, we just kind of go through the same routines. We'll go to a new church. We'll think that the pastor is the greatest pastor in the world. you know. And then, oh, well, I'm tired of him, so let's go to another one. Or we'll go to a church, and somebody will hurt our feelings, so we'll go to another church. And we'll just kind of hop from church to church to church. That's not really what God wants us to do. Um, God wants us to grow, and he wants us to be known by the church the same as he wants us to know the people in the church. And if you're always hopping around, you're not going to get that. Your growth depends on not going from church to church. Some people who go from church to church have convinced themselves, oh, it's not me, I'm not a church hopper. But the truth is, if you have not stayed involved in one church for longer than you know five years, unless you like move, then that is exactly what you're doing. Um, which brings me to really the last point of this of this um, of this lesson: outlast a problem, really outlast it. Sometimes somebody will hurt our feelings, you know. Get over it, forgive them, do do whatever is necessary to to grow from it and to move on. You know, um, if you keep hopping around every time that somebody hurts your feelings, I mean, you're really not going to make it very far. Um, in fact, Jesus said they are going to mistreat you because they mistreated me. You know, I mean, it's just it's just something you have to expect. Um, but with that being said, don't be a problem. Don't go to a church and start got, complaining about the pastor, talking behind the pastor's back about how he's doing things wrong. Uh, find somebody that you don't like and start talking bad about them to other people. Uh, go to a church and complain about the last church you were at. Uh, you know, um, go to a church and try to tell, tell them how they need to change everything. You know, d don't be a problem person. When you go to a church, um, seek after God. And give other people grace and just kind of just kind of let it go if somebody you know does does you wrong. Um, with that being said, I, I want to warn strongly against going to house churches. Um, sometimes when Christians are tired of um, authority, they're tired of, of doing things the right way, they will just go to what's called a house church. Now this is where a bunch of supposed Christians, I, I don't know if they actually are or not I, not really the point, will meet in the house. 
and they won't really grow, they won't really do anything in the community, they won't really serve people or, you know, uh, contribute to anything, but they just don't want to be um, under a pastor, they don't want to go to a church, so they want that more, you know, I'll do whatever I want feel. Well, I want to strongly warn you against doing something like this. Really, the church was meant to be under a certain level of authority. See, um, Pastor Chuck and I, um, we are in the image of God. That, that's a, a denomination. So we have people over us. And then we watch over the church. And then um, other people in the church watch over other people. So we have like this, this authority thing. We answer to somebody. We don't just do whatever we want. We don't just cheat, teach whatever we want. If we teach something that's not biblical... Um, our denomination will get us in trouble. If we don't pay tithes, our denomination will get us in trouble. You know, it's 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 something where we are under authority, and those under us are under authority. We don't talk about bad about the denomination that we're under, and we expect those people who are in our church to not talk bad about us. You know, if if I've wronged you, you know, come talk to me, and we'll work it out. Because that's what Christianity is about. It's about you know forgiving people and loving them. It's not about harboring resentment and talking bad about people and gossiping and complaining and trying to cause problems. It's not what Christianity is about at all. So I hope that this was, was a helpful lesson for you. Um, next lesson will be about worship. Um, we just have two more lessons uh, left in this uh, class.